by the way, all the videos, it's already on the web page of the course. And I will add this one, whatever we, we, we recording today. First of all, you have this application on your computer, on this computer, on your computer. When you run it, when you run it, it open up this screen, as you know, you log in. And then we stopped last time plotting this one. Okay, this one shows me if there is any link between GDP per capita, meaning, you know, every dot it's a, a country. So is there connections between how rich is the country? The higher the, this is like more richer countries. Are people are happier in this country? That's the question that we're trying to explore. Is happiness, relate to how rich you are. So if a country has only 20,000 per capita, meaning the average income per year, it's about 20,000, our countries are happier. And it looks like there is a positive relationship. You know, these one are higher than this one. This is richer countries. They are also seems like happier, okay? So this is like making a chart. So how did we make the chart? We pulled the data from two sources. And in fact, I downloaded and I put it in Excel for you. And when you take those two Excels, you read the relevant information, you combine them and you make them uh, two, uh, from two, two tables, you make them as one table and then from that table, as a panda table, you can make a scattered, that's called a scattered chart. The truth of the matter, I made a picture of it, and then I'm just showing it to you guys here. And that's what we did with like uh, knowing a little bit about how to make a software. So we took the image, this is really an image, and you can see, see if I do right click inspect, you can see really the code, okay? So we made a code here, you see it's IMG, that's really for image. And this is really the connections to where the picture is. It says static here. I put it on my hard disk, okay? And it just shows it to me. How does it do it? We don't get too much into it, but at least I want to explain to you today, how does it really do it, okay? But before that, I will show you, this is where we stopped last week. We did, I didn't even describe that, but I would like to make a review first. First of all, I would like to make a comment that you have all my videos, okay, right in the beginning of the, right in the, the first, when you go into the website, right in the first topic, you have, all my class videos that I, I taught this course already before, we already arrived to, we finished this one. We really are, we are here. We finished all of those. We are on this topic, session number five. Okay, hopefully I will finish it today. Okay, and please do watch the videos. They are excellent videos. I will add some of the videos that I'm recording I will add them here in the in the bottom, okay? I will add the video for today. I will add it right here so you can, if you want, you can uh, watch that again, okay? So what I'm recording today. And every time I teach, I put it in the bottom and then I erase those ones. Those ones I always keep because they are very good summary of the whole material. That's one point, okay? The second point I would like to make a review. Let me make, make it bigger. What we did last time, we tried to understand what machine learning is all about. And we had some uh, definitions, okay? Some definition, I said, this is the best one, but it's too formal. This one are more uh, human being can understand it. And the key point that Machine learning, it's when the computer can learn from the data. 
learn from the data is the key point in machine learning. We learn for the computer can learn. How does it do it? We will learn in the course. But the key point is I'm not making rules to the computer and I'm asking the computer follow the rules. No, that's not machine learning. As we saw last time, uh, you know, if I'm writing rules and the computer follow them, that's just a regular computer program. But if I'm giving him an algorithm and show him data, and I said to him, go ahead and learn, that's learning, okay? And we'll talk about it more. We start today and we finish this chapter. The next chapter is really A to, A to Z for step-by-step step, the whole process of machine learning. That's what we're doing the next following couple of weeks. Okay, we start in chapter two, but today and last time we tried to understand what is machine learning at all. So one of the things I said is learn, that's the key point. Learn from the data, okay? A computer is learning from a data, that's machine learning. And see this one, it's really emphasized my point saying that the computer ability is to learn without being explicitly programmed. I'm not giving the computer rules. I'm giving him data. I'm giving him an algorithm and I am following as procedures we will learn and then the computer will learn from the data. The beautiful part of it is that the computer is able to, by learning, himself learn what the rules are. Sometimes, okay, and we saw in machine learning a, a field called data mining. After the computer learn from the data, I go and see what are the rules, if how. That we call patterns recognition. It recognize the connections between various part in the data and those rules I can learn from it myself as a person. Something I couldn't really notice, but the computer did because it follows some special uh, rules, uh, special uh, procedures to learn, okay? Then we mentioned the concept of training set. It's like when I give you some data and I tell the computer, go ahead, study. After you study, I show him some other data and I tell him, what do you think about it? I repeat it. In every study we will see in the future, in the next few classes, I give the computer some data. I tell him, look at those data and learn them. Is he learned from it? And then the next stage, we will give him test data. It's called test set to testing. I tell him, let's see how good you learned. And I give him the test data and I ask him, what do you think about it? I know what the answer are. I'm just testing if the computer has learned well. If he can understand the data of the test, then I say he learned very well. I can use it, okay? Don't worry if you don't understand it today. Next time we're gonna follow a really nice example and everything I'm saying today will start making more sense. And when you re read this chapter again, it will make more sense. But what I want for today is not just training set, it's designed for, to teach the computer. I have some data, I tell the computer, study. After he study, in fact, I mention a test, I'm testing if he's doing good. The truth of the matter we will see next week or next following few sessions, there's another set. There are in fact three sets. One is that he study. One, we will call it validation. I didn't mention it last time. Validation, it's like uh, we try to find out how to help the computer to study. So we look at the validation set and see what helps the computer the best to learn. And after we help him with the validation, we give him another set called test. And then we test if he's doing good. If he's doing good, 
I, I will say, well, my computer already did learn very well. I can use it. If it is not, then I just throw it away and try to find a different algorithm. All that will make much more sense next week, next time when we get to chapter two. For now, we're just learning some vocabulary. Not everything could be clear immediately, but it will, I promise you. Okay, then we said, why do we want to use machine learning? And we emphasize that usually a regular program will give rules to the computer and it follows. And we said, this is not the best things. We gave the example of a spam, a program. Let's say I want to find out if an email I received, it's some garbage. Somebody tried to sell me something and it just bothered me. So I can give a whole rules to the computer and yeah. follow it. If you follow it, it will do okay. But is that the best? We said no. Why? Because we would like, instead of giving him the rules, we would like that we give him an algorithm. We give him a training set. He will learn from it. And after he will find the rules. Okay? And if, if for some reason, the environment, we would like him to change his algorithm. We mentioned that last time. Again, everything today will be our last session and today's, there are a lot of vocabulary that you need to know and over time will make more sense, okay? Oh. So that's what we talked. Any questions? Somebody tried to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Me. I just want to ask a question about the, sure, go ahead. Uh, the test uh, and just the validation. Just speak louder, I can hear you. I wanted to ask a question about the test and the validation uh, data. So yeah. How do you know that the computer is not doing good? Oh, here I tell you something we will spend a lot of time on it. We will. Next uh, few sessions in chapter two. We'll go over really step by step. We define everything carefully. We define the process, but very good question. As I said, let's say I want to find out, you know, even in the, the example I just was mentioning before, see, you see this picture? Is rich countries are happier than poor countries? That's the question. Right, and then I tell you, you know, there is a country that I don't know anything about it. I just know how much money on average the people do. What do you think? Are they happy or not? Okay, I will repeat myself. I have some data like here. Okay, and let's say there is another country in the world and I want to know how people are happy in this country or not. Okay, that could be a good question. And I go ahead and I say, okay, I, I want the computer to learn between the link between richness and happiness. The computer look at that, it will try to learn. By the way, let me, I will, I will just show you even what we're going to do today, okay? The computer looks at, I ask him, Go and use linear regression. I will explain what linear regression does, okay? Linear regression is, is taking the data, it's trying to find a line, a good line that is close to all the points, okay? And you say, why? Look, I found a good line. You know, the data are around the line. This is my model. This is really my model. See, I, I, you know, here when I showed it, the, the, I just made it a little bigger, so it's easy for the eye. But you know, if we stretch it a little bit, it looks just like this. Okay, this is the data. See, the one with the red, I don't really know. They are not part of the training set. See those red one? There are, there are countries that nobody showed it to me. Nobody showed me US, nobody showed me Australia, French, Korea, Hungary. I don't know about them. So 
my training set is only the blue one. So I look at the blue one and I look at the data and I say, it looks like there is, and I try to find a line that will go very close to all the point. We'll talk about it today and maybe next meeting, okay? But I say, okay, can I find the linear regression model? The model is a line that show the relationship. And then I say, we will talk about a, a criteria. The criteria is that the dots will be close to the line. So I say, here, this is the best line. We'll explain and we'll define what best mean. Best can mean many things. And we define what best mean. In our case, best mean that we find a line that all the points are close to, okay? After I do that, you know, I try to put the red line, you, you see the red point? We we'll talk about it, that's a different topic. I will talk about those, those red are different than the previous red. Let me see if I have, you know, I don't have that one, but I will go back to this line, to this one. You know, now if I go back to this and I put the line here, I can tell you that US people are happier, Australia is happier, and I can give you a sense of by knowing where the line is, I can tell you that, yeah, people that has more income, are, they are richer. And how do I know it? Because when I did this one, I found a line that the line is positive, the slope is positive. If the slope is positive, that means that richer countries are happier. And if you give me the US, it's probably supposed to be around here. So they are very happy. And if a country has less income, they are less happy. So usually you will say, well, I need only two sets. One, it's the training, not including the one with the red, with the red. You know, I can use only the one with the blue. Those are the training. The one with the red I don't have. And then I check if the model is really good for also for the red one, and it does. Okay, because you see, US has more income. They are happier than people in Hungary. They have lower income and a straight line does represent them well. So you can say Amos, but there is only two sets. One set, the blue one, they are the training. The red one are the test. I'm testing if the model is doing a good job. And, but you mentioned there are three. I mentioned there are three, three data sets. And one we call it validation. And validation has a very important, it's not showing here. And chapter two, we'll talk about it more. And that's helping the computer to fine tune, to fine tune his learning. And we'll talk about it next time, next few sessions. Very important data set. Because I can have several models, by the way. Somebody can, we'll talk about it more organized today. And now I'm just giving you Drummond very, vague answer, but I will be more precise. There's some okay. phenomena that call overfitting. Some person say, well, I have a better model, excellent model. See, it developed like not a straight line, a crazy line. You see that it goes over all the point. It's very close to all the points, much better even than the straight line that I will put here. You know, much better than this one. Okay, because you know, the last point is not really, it's not going really through all the point. He said, I have a crazy model, but it's a very good one. Look, all my training points are really, but look, this is really crazy. That's phenomena called overfitting. We talk about it. I'm just throwing word in the, in the, in the air. So you hear the word and then later on, we'll be very precise in understanding it. But as a beginning, it's good to hear that. So I tell you, well, look, I'm doing much better than the straight line because look, my model 
this is called a polynomial model. I will mention it. It looks like all the points is really almost close, very close. This is in the training. But what happened in the test? It might do very bad. If I give him a point he never seen before, he might do very bad. So how do I choose if I choose this model over the simpler one to this one? Which one is better, this one or the crazy one? But it looks on the training model, it looks better. And we will have a criteria how to choose it, okay? So for today, I would like you just to know there is a training set, like part of the data. There is a test set and there is a validation set. How do we use them? We will learn in the next few sessions. Okay, that's just really the whole objective of chapter one is just to throw at you a lot of vocabulary and later on everything will be much clearer because we work in an organized way to analyze the data. Okay, I hope that answered the question, Dramen. More questions, okay. guys? Hello, doctor. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I want like it. I want to ask any. It's hard for me to hear. I apologize. Let me put maybe my volume higher. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I say that I want to ask any question, but um, how to how to know uh, the analysis of the data we have and containing and errors and how to think to resolve this now. Okay. If I understand when you have errors in the data? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. By the way, part of which I kind of mentioned a little bit last time. I'm gonna get to that. I will come back to that, by the way. That's the stuff we did. One of the part of the thing which is extremely important, mm. it's called anomaly, or I like the word outlier better. Some people call them error. See, like, you see all the data are like nicely looks like here, but then there is one here totally out. Someone will say like, errors, this is probably error. Am I right? But yeah. I'm very careful. I don't want to lose information. Somebody say, if you find an error, just took it out, take it out. So somebody will say, okay, let's take this one out. And many times I said, don't rush. You might have, you know, this point has two information, the feature two and feature one. I don't know, maybe feature two is not an error. Only feature one, somebody entered the data, he made an error, okay? okay. So is there a way you will ask to fix it? Because I don't want to lose, maybe this one also has information. So I want to fix it maybe if I can. If I can't and I see there's really an error and this is just destroying maybe my analysis, I will throw it away, okay? Or together. But I'm not rushing. See, in two dimension, it is, uh, you can say, well, I'm going to throw it away, it's totally out. But if you have, let's say, 20 dimension, like 20 features and one of them maybe is an error, all the other 19 is good. You don't want to throw that point. You want to fix the, the feature that has the error. So that's called, it has, a, it has a name even, it's called imputation. Imputation, we use it when we think there might be some error in one of the features and uh, we throw it away. Uh, we throw just that feature, we'll fix it. And many times, uh, maybe it's missing, you know? That's a, that's a this point, I didn't have feature one. I have only the feature two. So I can't even put it in the picture because I don't have feature one. I have only feature two. But I don't want to lose that information and I want to fix it. 
The whole topic is called imputation. We'll talk about it, it's a beautiful topic. By the way, I was writing once a, a paper with some colleague, they're not my colleague anymore. I don't like to work with that kind of people. And uh, we did the whole analysis. <coughs> and I, I asked myself, it was try to find if there are some errors in the data. Maybe the data I got have some errors and maybe I'm getting mm. results that might look good, but the truth of the matter is because some errors. So I ran some algorithms, some of which we'll talk about in this course. And all of a sudden I discovered that there are many duplication in the data, which couldn't be. Let's say you see this person, see let's say this one, let's say I have 10 like him. That's unlikely that 20, 10 people will have exactly the same data. So I looked into it deeply and deeply and I realized the data was really bad. I throw it away. So errors is a big topic, very important. And uh, you know, it's really in the stage, we will see the whole process in the next few sessions, finding errors, fixing errors, finding what data are missing and how much is missing. Can we fix it? Can we use some of the data? And although the other are missing, that's part of the process of data preparation, to prepare the data. Very important stage. Honestly, machine learning, I would say 60, 70%, very much depend how well you organize your data, find errors, fix errors, find missing data, fix them, how to fix them. All of that are extremely, extremely important topics. Okay, I hope that's answered the question. Yes, oh, I think this is a really important thing, important uh, part. Extremely important part. Because last, you know, last uh, five years, we have this issue in uh, election here. Uh -huh. So one candidate found that there was a duplication on the list. Hmm. So he decided, so decided not to not to contest. Huh. So because if you have like a, a, a five million people data, it is really important to to check it, and that is the most important part. How are you going to check like five million record of people in a list of a, a election list? Then you need to find an algorithm who can check that. Yeah. In fact, uh, I was talking to Soro about financial data and I show him some uh, format, how the financial data and how you can, today it's beautiful. This is the way a computer is uh, collecting data on financial statement in the US. It looks like crazy, but it's beautiful when you understand it. Now it started in 2009. In fact, they started that project. First uh, companies uh, were voluntarily filing their data in this format and uh, about 500 big companies. And they found out that the process was really beautiful. The data is uh, much readable, but and then they, they recommended everybody will start doing it. And then starting from the end of 2011, starting 2012, it was mandatory that all companies traded in the US has to file it in this way. Now I followed the data from 2012 up to 2000. Now I'm, I, I have up to 2019, but I'm expanding it to 2020, one more year. And I found the data of 2012 are much less reliable than the one in 2019. There are much less error in 2019 than it used to be in 2012. 2013 was a little better. Starting 2014-15, the data is quite reliable. So should I throw away the data from 2012? Should I throw away the data from 2013? The answer is absolutely no. 
because maybe out of the 5,000 companies I have, some of them have very good data. So having, 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 some data bad, it doesn't mean to throw it away. It's not the right solution. Who is this? And if I can uh, just mute. I mute everyone, so if you want to press on the microphone. Still there, right? Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay, if you want to talk, just open your microphone, please. So for you, Draman, I wouldn't say that, it's true, 2012 is not the best data, but I still can use it. I just have to fix it somehow. So I remove some of the data, I fix some of the data and I use it. And it gave me much better result to predict stuff for the future. But that's, we, we will talk about all of those topics more as we progress, okay? Okay, let's move on. Uh, all those are really good example and very good question, by the way, okay? So, and then we talked about visualization, how important it is. In fact, that's one of the reasons I make you understand how to make this programming. That's why we took certificate one in software engineering, okay? And visualization is a very important thing in machine learning. So how do you make a picture like that? Okay, we'll talk about it. And we talked about, let me just go back a little bit. I would like to do review, it's very important. Review is extremely important. And we talked about that there is several types of machine learning. There is a study called supervised versus unsupervised. Then we said there is something called semi-supervised. And now we talked about reinforcement learning. Let me go back and explain each one of them. Okay, now we talk about the other one. Supervised is when my training said, I tell the computer, here's a bunch of emails. I will tell you even which one is good and which one is bad. Go learn about it. See if you can find out the, the link between all the features of the email and the results that I tell you, I tell you that those are good and those are bad. Go and learn from it. By me giving him all those emails and telling him which one is bad and which one is good, I'm giving him the label. I'm giving him the result. That's why it's called supervised. I'm giving him which group they belong to, okay? That's why we call it supervised. But I could have given him a lot of emails and he can make groups, but he doesn't really know who is better, who is good. So there's some algorithm that can just, the, the computer can put the emails in two groups, and, but it doesn't know who is good, who is bad, okay? Because the, I don't really, that's not the object that I'm trying to ask for him. I'm trying to ask him, find some groups. Can you find me groups without him even knowing who is the group, okay? Like here, I gave him a training set and I said, find groups. So he found four groups, four, one, two, three, four groups. But he doesn't know what this group means really. He doesn't know what this group means. He doesn't really know. That's called unsupervised, okay? I don't give him the meaning of which groups they belong to. That's why it's unsupervised. There's something in between, which is really interesting. I give him a bunch of data, training set. I tell him, find groups for me. Okay, so he found groups. And then I, by myself, go to the groups, look at them and say, oh, you know what? Let's give those one a name. Let's give those one a name. That's why it's semi-supervised. A computer is finding parts just based on the data. And I'm adding to it later on. I gave you a real life example that I work on. This is a real life. I really enjoy doing this project, by the way. My son, Hanok, by the way, helped me a lot. Okay. Why this is a semi-supervised learning? See, this is, a, you know, it's a, I think I mentioned it last time. I will say it again. 
Here we have a video camera. The video, when a people, people walk next to, the, next to the video camera, the computer take their pictures, okay, from the camera. And then it's supposed to say which person is the same. It doesn't know who I am. Let's say, for example, it's all my picture, you see? This is four pictures of me. There's another four pictures of me, okay? So he recognized this is the same person, but he cannot tell that this is Amos. I wrote later on, I looked at the data, I wrote Amos. This is why it's semi-supervised. The camera was able to say, okay, these are the same. Now, by the way, they made a mistake. Why they made a mistake? He said, this is the same person is true. He said, this is the same person is true, but he made a mistake. He thought this is two type of people. That's a mistake. He should have put all those pictures with these pictures. So I should have eight pictures together because it's the same person. That's why that algorithm wasn't good, okay? Moreover, if you look here, he made a second mistake. He put Hanor, this is my son Hanor. He put all his pictures together, which is good, but he put also one of my pictures in the middle. That's a mistake too. So that camera was very bad one, by the way. It wasn't good enough. It was okay, but it's far away from what it should be in order to really use it. So that's but we call it a semi-supervised study. And that camera didn't do a good job in identifying similar people. So that's why I thought it's a very good example to show you, okay? All right, let's move on in our review that we said that in semi-supervised, the, the computer will find the groups and I will give a name. And then we mentioned, I mentioned several algorithms you use, but it really doesn't mean anything yet for you. As we go over them, it will make more sense. And then later on, please do go over chapter one again, at least two or three times more. After we learn more, then this chapter will make more sense to you, okay? You know, we said in a model, in a model like here, for example, we found something that divide between the groups. We not say, you see, the model is defining, this group is triagonal, this group is square. By the way, a straight line will not be good. I will have to use a line, kind of a curve line. That's like building a special model, not a linear model, not a straight line of regression. I need a little more sophisticated, but it's a model that can distinguish between two groups. It will make more sense later on as we progress, okay? Then finally, <clears throat> I took on, I talked about one of my favorite, this is really my favorite algorithm. One of them is a lot of very beautiful one. This one is mimicking real life, how we study in life. It's called reinforcement learning. <clears throat> and I said last time, I repeat that, it's like a child, a baby. When a baby is young, start learning how to walk, he doesn't know what the difference between a fire and a water. He's just walking around the room. And if by mistake he goes to the water, he would be happy. You know, he likes to play with water, he would be happy. But you know, children always rumbling around, going around, and if he goes to the fire, boom, he get burned, a baby, starts screaming, crying. Most likely he's not gonna get close to the fire again. That's the way children study. They study from experience. So that's the way reinforcement learning is. I give the computer a lot of cases. We look at the computer as an agent to try to learn. We give him a lot the environment that he is around, a fire, water, okay? And then he can take an action. So action is a very important concept in reinforcement. He moved to the right, moved to the left, whatever. And then if he gets to the water, he's happy. So he get a reward, he's happy. He found something he likes. 
If he gets to a bad situation, then his reward is uh, negative, is bad. I say, oh, oh, now I learn. Fire is bad. I'm not getting close to fire. So he's developing a policy. He's developing a policy. Don't go next to a fire. Go close to water. So by, ex by experience, he is learning where to go and where not to go. That's beautiful algorithm. Used a lot by, you know, when you write a computer program to play chess versus champions. You know, you probably have heard about people beating the best chess player. The computer is doing better. But the truth of the matter, this is the way it does. The computer is playing against somebody else. And in the beginning, it doesn't know how to play chess. It doesn't know anything about chess, okay? And he tries some moves and he loses. So he keeps it in his memory. Next time, he tries not to repeat the same mistakes. So he's trying another one, another. So he's trying so many times until eventually, he really learned how to take the best move that he wins the game, okay? That's called reinforcement learning. Okay, it's really hard to implement. It sounds so easy, but it's not. But it's a beautiful algorithm. And we, we talk about it in the future. Last week I mentioned, you know, how do I teach the computer? I can teach the computer by giving him one case. So he learned one thing. I give him another one, another one, another one. That's called incremental. Every time I give him one time. The other way to do, and there's advantages and disadvantages to every one of the two methods. Another one, I give him like 20,000 examples. Tell him, okay, go ahead and study from those 20,000. Of course, it will take him some time to study and learn. For the time being, I have to wait for him. But when he finishes, you will get a very good accuracy. On the other hand, what happened a lot in online, especially on, and that's why the man came to be online, you know, you develop a machine learning process. You put it on the website and people start using your website. And every time a person visits your website, the computer learns a little bit. The next one come, and another user, he learn a little bit too. And again and again, until after you get, let's say, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 visitors on your website, the computer already have learned a hell of a lot. So it's learning step by step, okay? That's why we call it online learning, okay? Okay, then finally, the last things I did last time, I didn't really, it's a little hard to explain in the beginning, but as time goes by, you will see it will be clearer. By the way, this example is a good one, okay? Let's say, let me give you this one maybe. When I'm trying to learn the connections between wealth or how rich I am to if I'm happy in life, you know, I'm trying to find a line. A line is an infinite dot. There's millions, billions of dots on. When I'm developing a model, when I'm seeing, you know, what we call continuous variable, to another continuous variable, that's called regression. It's still a supervised, but it's, we give it even a special name when I can have data on each one of the points on the X and each one of the point on the Y, just because it's continuous variable, we give it even a special name. We call it a regression. That's why it's called regression, okay? But that's, it's very important to distinguish in models when we develop a model. And we usually, we don't just talk about the points we have in the set, we talk about general, the whole connections, okay? Then we mentioned instance base. This is very important. Versus model based, okay? Instance based is, has to do with the, we have expression I mentioned it last time says in Hebrew, tell me who is your friend, I tell you who you are. 
you know, if you tell me this guy, this guy, they are both of them are my friend, I say, you're probably like them. So if I know them, I will tell you, you are probably like that. If let's say you tell me Draman is my friend and I say, okay, Draman is an educated person, he's hardworking. And you tell me you have another friend and he's also like to study and he's hardworking. I can tell you most likely you are also a hardworking and studying all the time. That's called instance base. I try to compare you to the examples around you. Your friend is the one that are next to you. That's called instance based. I'm trying to study about you, although I don't know you at all, but I do know who you are close to. And how do I measure closeness by the way, it's not an easy topic. I need to know how to measure how close you are to them. And based on that, I will make my decision versus a model. In a model, I learn from a lot of people, not just your friend. And then when I know who you are, I know other things about you, I can tell you who you are, okay? That's the difference between instances I learn based on some point, some data around you. And here I'm learning from the whole data. And after I learn from the whole data, I see plus minus where you are. And then I can tell you about yourself. That's the difference between instance model to a base model. For example, here, if I'm here, I have two triagonal next to me and one square, you're most likely supposed to be a triagonal. That's instance learning, okay? On the other hand, here's another example. I give you a lot of data and you notice that all the square are here, all the triagonal are here. And if you tell me you are here, that X, I still say you are triagonal based on the model. The model told me this is the line. Although you are close to those two, but you are more really in the group of triagonal. So this one, I would say it's triagonal based on the model. Based on the instance, I would say you are a square. So depending which one you like, most of the time the model will do a better job. Many times, both of them would get the same conclusion. And we will learn both of them. We talk about both of them as well. This is where we stopped last week, okay? We said, okay, we got data. We would like to organize them in a little nice table. And then we want to put that data right here. And that's where we stopped, okay? Basically, we stopped in the point we have data from two sources. We kind of got to this point, but we didn't show you how we do. I just talked about it a little bit. And I definitely didn't tell you about, let me see now this one, this one. Yeah, this one, in fact, the truth of the matter, those red one, they are missing data. And we talk about it today a little bit more and we'll continue next time. Okay, so let's talk about the actual data. And we put our hand a little bit on programming. As you know me guys, I believe that education is a tool. It is not an end by itself. If somebody says, I just want to study. And I said, that's good. But if you only want to study and you're not going to implement it, you study useless, okay? Knowing it's not enough, you need to know how to implement it. If you don't know how to implement it, then you are useless and you're wasting your time to study. It's nice, it's already total waste, but if you don't know how to implement it, it doesn't help anybody eventually, unfortunately. But okay, so I like always to show how you really actually do it. So let's start with the first one. We want to know, how do I make a picture like this? I can do it in many ways. Somebody once, I think it was uh, J uh, Greg, or one of you asked me, uh, people, use, uh, people use Jupiter. I could have showed you that on Jupiter, but showing you on Jupiter, okay, so you learn how to do it 
by itself, but still you don't know how to work in a team. You don't know how to put it in a real life project eventually. You definitely cannot make a website that includes your image. So I like the approach in which you're actually close to real life as much as possible. This is close to real life, by the way, this looks like a regular website, okay? I might even put it right into Academy City. You know, I'm thinking about putting this one, chapter one, right inside here. That's a, when you get here, you click and the picture will come automatically. The only reason I, I holding myself from not to do that, because I like it when you actually see the code, okay? These are the important things that you know how to do. That's your job eventually going to be. So this code is extremely important. More important than just looking at the way the table look like, because this is what does the picture. And that's the one that I would like you guys to learn and appreciate. And I can't wait for the day you guys come back to me and say, Amos, I'm working as a machine learning or I'm even introductory level in machine learning because I know how to do it. That will make me very happy. I will be so happy to get to that day and we will get them, I'm sure. So let's go and not just know how to do this code, We'll do it in a smart way. There's so many ways, as I said, you can do it in Jupyter as part of it. You can make it so many ways, but I like it the right way. The right way is to do it smart. What does it mean smart? We already mentioned that. We made a special objects called algo. Algo is our base object, has many functions. You see all the diff is functions. Okay, all those are functions. They're gonna help me to do a lot of work. See, this is beautiful. They're gonna help me for all the other chapters. Then we learn in Python that if I wanna use the algo in chapter one, which we are doing, I can start from algo. I don't have to start from the beginning. I take everything I did in algo. That's what we're doing in this line. That's called inheritance. We're inheriting all the stuff that they are in algo. And then we just modify it. The first things we modify is the init function. Remind you, the init function, it's in other languages call it the constructor. In Python, they don't exactly call it, although some places they do, and I like it when they do. I call it also constructor. But this is the way I build the object. And when I build the object or I make the objects, this function is the first to be created, to be run. And the beautiful part of it, when we go into the algo object, we have exactly the same function. Here it's even bigger because it does a lot of things and it's defining, you see all of those is definition of variables I'm gonna use. Okay, I'm gonna use in my study. Then it has some uh, definition of uh, directories that I'm gonna use. Okay, then uh, it has other, you know, this is just telling me, for me, it's just telling me I'm starting to walk, so I know it's walking. I don't really need those lines, the truth of the matter, but it's good for instructions when you're studying. Then there's some, uh, but some definitions on, uh, on uh, for painting pictures. So I don't have to worry about it. It's done in algo. There is a uh, some random seed. Okay, there's something. One day I will talk about it. It's kind of if I talk about it, you will get confused. It's kind of funny. I'm using a random number, but I'm making sure the random number will always be the same. So it's on contradiction. It is not. And uh, one day I will talk about it. Uh, but basically it's setting up really the basic things I will always need in any chapter. So that's why we're putting all of them here. I will, as over time I will show you what, which one, each one of them 
how I'm using it, and that's easier for you to study. If I go about each one of them, I'll spend half an hour and then you get bored. But as we go, we will, uh, we will uh, modify them. By the way, some word you can see, I save the data that I'm going to use. I have a training set, we mentioned that. When I have a test, I don't see a validation here, you see? But we will create a validation depend on the, the study we're doing, okay? There's something called target. Target I will define, that's why, that's what I said. As we go along, I will explain more and more, okay? There's a trend here and there's a training data here and we will see as we go along, okay? There's uh, some numerical attributes versus non-numerical attributes. Was it, there's something called pipeline. That's a very important concept in machine learning. Beautiful part, we will get there. That's really relate to programming more. So I'm not gonna go about each one of them. It would be a waste of time, but I will go over all of them, promise, as we progress. The most important things, and we said it before, when I do chapter one, I inherit from algo, and I have also a constructor. The constructor of algo one does not have any variables. Therefore, when I'm in the view, and you remember that from software engineering, the view file is right here. And you will see as we go along, okay, you will find out that there is a structure in there, okay? Uh, no, I'm in the wrong application. Sorry about that. Not the main. I need this one. When I go to the view, there is a structure. The structure I'm not going. I'm not going to require you. You're not a software engineer. You know that's what you for now at least. But I just tell you there is one function for every chapter. There's even subsections of chapter two, subsections of chapter two. Then we have chapter three. It's another project, project one. There's a subsection of project one. There is a, then there's a lot of other stuff. But basically, you can, there's other projects called gold. And the structure is beautiful. Why is it beautiful? And let me explain that. Let's look at chapter one here. I said, this is the code that activated when I go here. I go here and choose this one. It goes up to that point and it actually makes this one. And the way I design it, and it's a good design and you can take it with you even, the way it works is you have under the template, in fact, in the core, Uh, I forgot my own code. Can you believe that? We have those chapters, but I, what did I put? I think I put it here. Yeah. Yeah. I have chapter one, two, and three, first of all. And each one of them, let's open the first one. The first one, it's designed in such a way, you see, it's not a complete web page, really. It's inherited from the base. It's on the door. In fact, this part, if you have a good eye, this is exactly, this is exactly this list. Last time I put the Amos, remember? I put the Amos, and how did I put Amos? I simply went to here, and I put Amos here, see that? But it doesn't know what to do with Amos, okay? But very important, I said, Put it in chapter one and the page will be called Amos, okay? So it's going to work around. For that really, you will need to spend some more time on learning what we did in software engineering one. It eventually brings you to chapter one to the page Amos. 
So if I go to the view, eventually going to bring me to chapter one, it's going to look for a page called Amos. This is not Amos, so it's not going to stop here. It's not going to stop here. It's not going to stop here. See, they are all different one for each one of the stuff that I made. Okay? Wrong. Wrong. And eventually I do have Amos. But see, Amos doesn't do anything. So just for you, curiosity, it's so important that you realize that in fact, I can build up one for Amos. Let me copy this one. As you know me, I like to copy. And let me even take the, the, the object. I don't even want to create it. I just want to show you that the structure does work. Works beautiful. I'm going to make another page under chapter one, and I'm going to call it Amos. I'll come back to that, OK? I'll call it Amos. Fair enough. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not going even tra to transfer anything to it. Just to make it so simple, the simplest one. This one, I'm gonna have Amos come, and the only things I want him to say inside will be say Amos. Okay. So by the way, you can see that all the HTML I keep them under the same chapter called Chapter One. So if I go to Chapter One, you can see all of those ones. I can take one of them just for fun and copy it, and I'm going to give it the name Amos. And I'm going to save it. So now it's going to open Amos. Let's open Amos. I don't want all of that one. All what I want is to say, I'm not going to put any pictures. I'm just going to put here the word Amos. And I would like to see if he will give me the Amos. Let's see if he will do it. So let's refresh. Let's, yeah, this one is fine. Let's control C. Bingo. Let's go back to the application, refresh. And we have Amos, and I would like to click Amos. And beautiful, see, it says Amos. To convince you, I will even change it again, just make it the blue color blue, okay? Style equal to color blue, color blue. And that's why it's uh, several times, so you can see see that clear, okay? Going back here, refresh, choose Amos, and bingo, I see Amos several times. So the whole mechanism works nicely, and I do encourage you, try to understand it yourself. I'm not gonna spend the time on that here. I do do it in, as I said, in certificate uh, two and three in software engineering, but I do encourage you, you have most of the knowledge and you can figure it out. But the beautiful nice things is now it will help you to understand the whole chapter, okay? So here I got to Amos, okay? I got to Amos page. If I don't really want Amos, I'll just throw it away. You know, it was just for the example. And go back to chapter one. I don't really need Amos. It was just for demonstration purposes. So I won't waste. This is done. And then the truth of the matter, I don't really need this page. It's unnecessary. I'm done. It's gone. The whole thing of Amos is gone. If I go here, refresh the page, Amos is gone. There's no Amos. And if you want to add one, now it's easy for you. You know how to add. Okay, and I give you some exercise. So let me repeat that again. You will need, in order to add another things to the list, you go to this page, chapter one, you can add one of those. Make sure when you copy it, just change the ID to be like seven and seven. Give it any name you want. And then what do you want it to say on the list when you drop down? That's one thing you need to do. The second thing you need in the view, 
you will need to add another one like I did here, similar to L if page equal like I did Amos, you copy it just to here. And then you have like a rendering to which page you want him to render. And the page you do, I usually like because it's a kind of a small page inside the whole page. I like to give it a name with underscore before it. You don't have to, but I do. Let's make an order for me. And that's it, it will work. After I give you the, the assignment, I will uh, show it to you again, okay? But this is really nice. I do encourage you to try to understand it yourself. If you have a problem with that, don't bother. It's not really machine learning, it's software engineering. So don't bother with it. Let's focus now on the first one, okay? Please notice, okay, I'm going to choose the first one and you will say, see, according to when it gets to here, first of all, doesn't matter what I choose, it's uh, inside the chapter one function, it should say it down here. And then when I'm in the page, it will say inside the page, let's call it, you know, just for the fun of it. So you can appreciate that that's really what it does. Let's copy this one, put it here. So you will see, you know that it's exactly coming to here. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by that. If I go here, the first the page, choose the first one. You see, I'm choosing the first one. I'm clicking. I got this one. Oh, which function did he get to? He got to this function. And you see, the first thing I should see this word, and then I should see this word. Is that right? Let's see if that's true. By the way, I did a lot of stuff in the middle after that, but the beginning, that's the way it starts. Here we go. Please notice it says in constructor parents. Okay, that's not what I was looking. Oh, there's something before. That's something it says inside the chapter one function. This one, if everybody see, I hope everybody sees that in the bottom here, it says it right what it says here. So I got to the right place. Then when he got to the first page, because that's what I chose, he write down here inside the page plot JDP pair versus life satisfaction. Exactly what I wrote here. So I'm in the right place. Beautiful. After I got here, oh, and then I see there's a line, there's something written, and there is two lines. What is this one came for? This one must come from this line of code. It comes from creating the algo one. Okay, let's look at, this is the constructor. Algo one does not have any variables, doesn't accept any variables. So let's go to chapter one. This is algo, beautiful. When I create algo one, this function is being called. When this function is being called, Hey, let's see what it does. First of all, it's making 50 dash. Okay, this is 50 dash. After that, it says in constructor. That's exactly what a, hey, hold a second. No, I was wrong. And you will be right if you say I'm wrong. Because it says in constructor parents. It doesn't say in constructor. That means there is something come before this. Oh, that's interesting. What comes before this? This line. This one is calling the constructor of the parents. The parents is algo. Algo is the one that I'm inheriting from. So it is really, I'm kind of activating the constructor of algo. So let's go to algo constructor. We look at the algo constructor, eh, hey, beautiful. Here it is. This is nice. It says here, make a 50 dashes. He made 50 dashes. Okay. Then he said, write in constructor parents. Indeed, that's what he wrote here. And then he made another 50 dashes. Beautiful. Oh, but there is two dashes, two lines. Where the second line come from? 
Oh, the second one now is very clear. This is it, this is it, this is this one. So I have the, what come from this one? In fact, there is the whole part here, all this part come from the parents. And after that is making another line here. And right after that is writing in constructor. Indeed it does. See that? It says in constructor. And then pay attention. It write print or ECD. So it's printing or ECD. The truth of the matter, the reason I wrote all of that, it's for you to study. It's for you to follow up, to follow up. This is so important for you to follow up. You know, it's excellent way. The re reason I wrote it so clear, so you can learn. It's easier to learn that way. Otherwise you get lost. Now you can follow, okay? And then come, finally, finally, we're getting the first function. We're reading Excel file. PD, it's Panda. We studied, we had a whole section to study about Panda. Panda, it's a library in Python, has a lot of things. One of which, people have written a function called read CSV. By the way, it has also read Excel. Okay, you can read even Excel. You can write also to Excel if you want, and we'll get there. But this one is reading an Excel file. I need to tell him where the file exists. And I telling him it is somewhere here. This is the file. I tell him, go look at the two data path, go to that direct directory. At that directory, you should find this file there. Please read it for me. That's what I'm asking Panda to do. Okay, so where is this path? Now is the time to go back and just explain this one, okay? I'm going back to the utility and I have the algo and that's what I said, algo is my best friend. He does a lot of work for me. And what is two data path? Here it is. See self dot two data path. It's exactly what I'm telling Panda to use. And I define this variable to be part of algo, which becomes to be part of algo one. So he knows where it is. So he goes here and here I told him, here it is. This is a little sophisticated, it really is a very sophisticated way to do things in the right way. See, he says to him, you know, go find a directory called projects root directory and add to it the chapter ID. By the way, the chapter ID, it's nothing but whatever I put a chapter, it goes to here and he's putting it here as a chapter ID. So, okay, so he knows the chapter. It's whatever I give it to him. And if you have good eye, when we're building up the constructor, we put chapter ID to be chapter one fundamental. So he knows what chapter one is. He takes the chapter one and is adding it up to the project root directory. So, but what is project root directory? Hey, it's defined right here. So I have the chapter ID here, which is fine. And I have it defined here. But again, it's like crazy, looks like crazy, but everything here is designed for, with a lot of thinking. A lot, a lot of thinking. It says to him, to me, please go to the setting file and look for a directory called best directory. Hey, what that means? Setting mean, go, you have a project here, a whole project, machine learning. Under the machine learning, you have a file, you have in fact a directory called settings. So I'm asking him, go to the setting. And the truth of the matter, the setting is the base here. Go inside and look for a variable called base directory. So he found this one. And the truth of the matter, 
it is referring to the machine learning. That means nothing but really meaning go to this directory machine learning. It's really, the reason you write it this way, so if you copy it to another place, you always will find it. So, okay, I found it, beautiful. So what next? Where do I go now? Let's go back. Okay, I found the best directory. It is the machine learning directory. In the, this is the machine learning. Under that, I tell him, find a directory called static. So here it is. I found static. Under the static, find something called in, intro to machine learning. Here it is, intro to machine learning. Then I say, go to the data directory. Here are the data directory. This is professional. This is not like a, somebody learned something small. This is the way real life projects work because they are so huge. You get lost if they don't work organized. But now, after you have done all of that, you can forget about it. Because from now on, you know, when you talk about the project's root directory, you really mean this one. From now I can forget about the whole things. I'm doing it, I forget about it. I don't care anymore. Moreover, I even want to forget more than that. I care only about two data pairs. That's what I care. And what is this? It is exactly really this data, but then I tell you go to data sets and under data sets find chapter one. So I don't really care about the whole rest. I know that my data is here. This is where I pull the data. So if I want to use another Excel, I just put it here and the whole things will work like a magic. That's when you're professional, when you work and you study. And now it's so beautiful. I want to put some another Excel, it would be very easy. If for some reason I want to change, I just go to here. Chapter one, all the data for chapter one are here. For chapter two, they will be here. Everything will work the same way. Everything for chapter three will work the same. Chapter three, I don't have any data. I don't use it. Probably I'm downloading it from the internet. I do some other things, but there's no data that I need. By the way, he's putting it automatically. Yeah, he's putting from the internet, putting it right there. Okay, but I don't care. I forget about it. By the way, there's a Corona Excel file that I put there. I thought maybe to give it to you as an exercise. So I can put it right from there when you get to chapter two. Uh, chapter two, we'll talk about housing. Okay, so the data is right there. That's beautiful. By the way, housing we download from the internet. The truth of the matter, I think I can even delete it. You will put it there, you will see it. Okay? But the beautiful is I finally made an order. I'm working nicely. Every data of every chapter will be right under here, the data sets. I don't care about this part anymore. I really don't. I can forget it. The model, I didn't talk about the model yet, but this one, I can forget about it. I don't care. Honestly, many times I even forget it, how I did it, because I don't really care. Now I know how to use it. How do I use it? It's going to chapter one. When I go to chapter one and I want to use Excel for chapter one, all what I have to do, the truth of the matter doesn't matter which chapter I want. I always do two data pack because two data pack will be exactly for my specific chapter. It will do it automatically. That's the beauty. That's really is beautiful. Okay. Okay. Now I know where the file is, so he's gonna read it. By the way, that's the way it looks like. Let's open it. Uh, I use Ubuntu, so it's not gonna open Excel. I don't have Excel on my computer. I don't use any more Excel. I'll use text file. This is the way it looks like, by the way. You have the country, subject, descriptor, unit, scale, country, blah, 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 the year, estimate, start, attribute. See, you have all the countries in the beginning. That's the name of the country, the, the, the subjects, the first one it's course, domestic, blah, 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 and all of those stuff. That's one file that I use. 
You can follow up, by the way, the choose of the manual. I really need those numbers, one before the last, okay? So that's the 2015, this is really giving me the numbers. So I'm gonna pull up the column, 2015, if I recall well, we'll see in a minute. But this is the first file. Hello. Okay. Hello. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Somebody Excuse me. To... Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I hear you. I'd like to know, like something. To know something. Yeah, go ahead. Between uh, Ubuntu and uh, Debian, which is which one is the best? One more time, sorry about it. Between Ubuntu and Debian. Uh, honestly, I think both of them excellent. I use Ubuntu just, it's more friendly. But both of them okay. are Linux. They are just the interface slightly different. But both okay. of them are excellent. You will find a lot of documentation for both of them. Anything in the family of Linux will be good. Uh, by okay. the way, uh, let me show it to you, by the way. My son just finished uh, the version. It's beautiful. Hold it. Sorry about it. Let me stand up. I'm going to come right back. Okay? Let me show you. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Who's that, Sergey? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sergey. Okay. Let me let me close the shell. You can see a little better. Can you see me, guys? Okay. Yeah, good. In fact, I talked to Draman about it too, and I don't know if I sent you. This is a computer. See how small it is. It's like, there is two, it's come with two different cases. Okay. This is slightly more expensive, not really much, like about $10 more maybe. But this is a whole computer. See how small it is. Mm. Now inside you have eight RAM. You can put different SSD card. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I checked the, the prices by the way. Uh, it costs 16 giga, 32, 64, 128, 256, but you look at the prices, does it worth to spend the extra money? But it can support any one of those, by the way, you can even 512. Okay. And I, I decided for what I see from a lot of experience, the 128 per price, yeah? You know, because that's which one, you know, the, the more the better. The computer I'm talking to you now, I have SSD of one terabyte. It's a thousand. Yeah. But that's when I sit with it, I work on so much data. The one I showed the Soro, I downloaded for more than 4,000 companies for five years data. Just imagine how much data it is. Yeah. But even then I don't use 128, but I have so many other projects. So even if I wanted to do the whole project, I could do on such a small mini computer. But this yeah. one, the beautiful part, I, I went on a little more expensive, but inside is have even a ventilator, okay? Yeah. And on that, what the beautiful part, and that's what we did, that's why I want, that's why I'm so excited. You can tell by the way I talk, I'm very excited on what we do. I do, I'm waiting for the day you know, we're gonna put here Academy CD because we really put a lot of configuration and I installed Ubuntu. Yeah. Well, that one we will sell with Ubuntu as it is. And honestly, it's not to make money at all. It's just to get the name out and people start understanding that life is so beautiful and you can do beautiful things with, with knowledge, with being educated. You can do a lot of beautiful things. It's not the cost that I care. Okay, it's a, or secondly, you can even open up if it's not enough for you. There you go. I, I don't want to break it. And my son went with his girlfriend, of course. I will sit and study. This is open up. Yeah, here it is. You know, you can look here. Yes. If you want, you can hook up a whole hard disk next to it. So if you want to buy a terabyte, just. Yes. Get a little disk, 
plug it in and that's the end of it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now, the nice things about it, 128 is enough for 99% of the, of the world people. If you need more, so you hook up another hard drive. That's not the end. But I checked the number, the prices, you know. It's okay. uh, the difference between 128 to 256. It's like another 60 or 70 dollars. I thought it's less. I thought it's 40 would be, but it was even almost double than I thought. In my opinion, I wouldn't put the money. I'll be honest with you. If somebody okay. does need, go, what the heck? Go and buy another hard drive and hook it up. If you buy it, you can buy a Terra. If I'm going more, I would buy, buy a whole Terra, hook it up from outside, and that's the end of it. When I go and travel, I don't need the Terra. I will put anything I need right on yeah. this one, put it in my pocket, and I'm ready to go. Yes. Now, this one is nice. It has a, you have a regular, it has a Wi-Fi inside, yes. so it's wireless. You have a regular socket. I made it intentionally mm -hmm. to have a regular socket. You see mm -hmm. that? It has it's two USB, and USB. Uh, one is two and one for uh, three. So one of them is extremely fast. Yeah. The other one is okay. Then you have another, in fact, you have four. I think two is uh, two and one and two are three. Okay. So you can four, you can one for the keyboard, one for the one keyboard, and you have two HDMI. HDMI, yes. Two. You have two of them. So you can connect one two of them. HDMI. And I don't know how is the US, how is the v, uh, uh, USV in the uh, in the Ivory course. Yes. But you can get an adapter if you don't have HDMI, but the ca cable that I ordered yes. for those is HDMI to HDMI, but you can just make an adapter and that works beautifully. Adapter, yes. Yeah. It has a ventilator inside, so it don't get too hot. Yeah. The at RAM, in my opinion, is the most important, uh, even more than the processor. The processor is also work. Now, the last week, after, you know, my son had finished the whole installation a month and a half ago, and I made him search, how do you take the card so you don't have to do the whole installation every time? Yeah. So he found a way to take the card. You know, you take two little cards, you put them one next to each other, connect it to the computer, Yes. And you copy the whole thing. So you copy the Ubuntu, you copy the PyCharm, you copy the yes. Postgres, everything. Yes. And it takes about an hour or something, he told me. And then you just put the card and let the hell of it move on. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now you don't have to. It's like the way I told you about the Algo and Algo 1. After I did yes. the directory, I forget yeah. about it. I don't want to remember if it, even how I did it. I have so many other things to, to study. This is yeah. done deal for me. It works. Yeah. Now is to yeah. get more and more people to enjoy the knowledge. And that's the beauty of life. Yes. I hope it will give a boost to anyone in the Ivory Coast because uh, yeah. Draman worked very hard with me on yes. getting to this point for many years, honestly. It's not like this course see how much is every session, I'm every session, because we believe yeah. in what we do. And I really hope that will give a boost to what Draman have started in Ivory Coast and hopefully okay. will push to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is another thing that will make Academy City with Draman help to expand, to do the beautiful stuff we want to do. Like you were yeah. talking about a sophisticated website. I am waiting for to see Soro doing something in finance, see someone else doing in drama himself in politics. Use, yeah. you know, it would be really nice. Drama takes these little things, put it in his pocket and go and give it a speech. You know, and everybody says, hey, what's your computer? I say, it's always me, don't worry. Uh, yeah. that's, that's cool. That's much smaller than a laptop. You agree with me? You know, I can go now to Uganda, to Chicago, everywhere yes. I want. I don't have to take Indeed, my laptop. Yeah. Small computer. And by the way, the truth of the matter, I have everything online too. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'm protected in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's the of, so for your questions, I don't like Windows. Let's put it in this way. Although most of my life I use Windows. In the last year, I totally got sick of Windows. Uh, and then when I was looking, I looked at Ubuntu, but all of the Linux are really good ones. So if you choose another one, it's fine. But as long okay. as it's all Linux. By the way, people like uh, Mac, Macintosh more than Windows. Because okay. Macintosh operating system is very similar to Linux. Macintosh. The Macintosh is almost Linux operating system. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it works so nicer than people like Macintosh more than, uh, than uh, IBM or Windows, I should say. So if you chose uh, any other version, then Ubuntu is fine, okay? I just went on Ubuntu because it's, it has a nice interface. Looks, looks like Windows, but works much better. That's the only reason. But the beautiful part here now, we're saving also the money of installing Windows. Windows costs $100, just the operating system. Yeah. You know that? This small this computer is more, more, use, more useful. This is excellent for, honestly, for almost everything. Uh, the most important for a programmer, for home purposes, you don't need 8 RAM, even 4 is enough. You can buy an it's for version with four, slightly cheaper, but the price is not such a difference. I wouldn't go on any computer less than eight. But yes. for programmer, you need eight, okay? Yes. If you decide that you need more, just replace the card and just put 16 giga, and then you have the 16 yeah. giga. Like an hour, no. I don't think this one come, uh, this is relatively new for that. I don't think this support more than eight as of now. It comes with one, two, four, and eight. And eight is the maximum. And eight, for my experience, is perfect. All my computers have eight RAM, beside the one that I'm talking to you now that I use it for a, a deep learning and I do algorithm that takes a hell of a lot of time. And uh, that's why I bought 32 giga, in fact. I have 32 on mine. Just to have it work much faster, I use so much. So that's the only reason. Otherwise, it is perfect. It is, uh, for many years of experiences, perfect uh, one. Anyway, so that's the good news. I don't know how many, I think it's about, I think it's about six or seven inch. Uh, no, it's about five, inch. it's about seven, less than, about six centimeters by five centimeters, something like that, plus minus. That's really elegant. Yeah. And, uh, in, in, in my, in my computer, computer, I install, uh, I install the uh, Oracle Virtual Boss. You can install on that. Uh, and I install in uh, as a 16 machine. By the way, I used many times, see that's the process I went through. <laughs> I had Windows and I liked Ubuntu or uh, Linux, but I wasn't sure yet. So I installed uh, VirtualBox. Inside yes. the VirtualBox, I put the Ubuntu. Yeah. So I'm working on both of them on the same computer. After yes. a while, I got sick of the Windows because it always got stuck. And I said, the new compu this computer that I bought about two or three months ago, I said, this time I'm not, by, I'm not installing Windows at all. I'm just mm. installing Ubuntu and that's it. So I don't really have any Windows on this computer. I have another computer that has Windows and other things. In fact, the other one is my only one. I have the Windows with the, uh, the, the virtual box with Ubuntu inside. But I don't really go there anymore. I don't need to because I'm using this computer. Okay. And frankly, today, I would recommend to everyone, just forget the hell with the Windows. If you need Windows so badly, I take your advice, what you say, put a virtual box, but inside the virtual box, put the windows, not the other way okay. around. You know what I mean? Yes. Because you need uh, documents or something, and that's the way I do it, okay? okay. Uh, very interesting. The world is beautiful. You know what? For today, I think it's enough. We'll continue next time. But I think those discussions are a lot less important than what we study. Because this is real life. 
you know, I have noticed that as times goes by, the free product are better than the one that cost money. That's mm-hmm. crazy, crazy statement. It really is crazy statement. Your boot to is free. Yes, yes, yeah. Windows cost money. <laughs> A lot of money. It's better. <laughs> I mean, go explain now. Now, what makes the difference that you know that is your knowledge. Now your knowledge is what worth money. Eventually in the end of the day, if you take, you know, I hope I will be here another 30 years to see it myself, that everything should be free beside your knowledge, beside your skills. That's the only thing that should cost money. Anything else shouldn't cost anything, it's almost. You know, I got to that conclusion 20 years ago and it's getting closer. I have a software company in Chicago for diamonds, okay? Okay. And I decided not to continue developing too much because it's really already very, very good because prices will start going down. So I should focus on consulting more than the software itself. Because the software itself doesn't worth much. What really worth is my knowledge. It's my way of creating solutions. It's my way of solving problems. That's worth a lot of money. Nobody can replace that. But a software, somebody can write his own software. Drama knows it's even better than me. And I know it. And... Raman is not afraid and I'm not afraid. Everybody can take my course and teach it. Hey, I should be scared. Don't touch my material and nobody copy for me and I get scared. But you know what I noticed? On the contrary. Yes. Because I always bring new stuff. And to bring new stuff, always students would love it. So the material, go get it. Everything's for free. I don't care. But nobody can replace the way I translate it, the way I okay. use it. Okay, mm-hmm. that's why you want to study in a good university versus to mid-level university. In a mid-level, they also give you a lot of very good books that teach you. But what makes the difference between those professors and those professors? The professors in good university, they have such a special way of teaching it it's such experience that they bring to the classroom, nobody can replace them. That's why people are willing to spend three or four or 10 times more than going to a regular university, although theoretically all of them teaching the same material. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will conclude, I will finish the session today with the next sentence. You know, my younger kids, I tell them, you know, my younger kids now is last semester in uh, applied mathematics. He wasn't computer science, believe it or not. His professor told him, don't study computer science, you're wasting your time. If I told him that, he wouldn't listen to me. But when his professor told him, go and study mathematics, you're too talented. Because computer science is mathematics. And he's absolutely right. I know that sentence 40 years ago. When I went to University of Chicago, uh, almost wow, 38 years ago, 84, 37 years ago, something like that. And I remember first year there, I had a very good friend. He started studying computer science. He was the first generation in University of Chicago. University of Chicago claimed, and they were right. Computer science, there is no such a thing. Computer science is a branch of mathematics. Yes. So when you say machine learning, you really talk about mathematics. mathematics. When you talk about deep learning, it is really mathematics. mathematics. Now what happened, there is another field when people say computer science, what they really mean, software engineering. Yes. Software engineering is not machine learning. Now you know the difference. As because you took my classes, I give you a lot of examples. I tell you, this is not machine learning, this is software engineer. Okay? So, University of Chicago said, we don't teach software engineering. We not applied university well, theoretical university. We developed the tomorrow. 
we develop the mathematics, we develop the algorithm. Yeah. How to program its beautiful professional, but that's not the University of Chicago. University of, go to MIT. So if you want to be a software engineer, a very good one, you should go to MIT. Right. Now, MIT is an excellent university, no doubt about it. Top of the line university, can't get better than that. If you want to study software engineering, go to MIT. We don't teach software engineering. We teach mm -hmm. mathematics. We teach the theory. So we teach machine learning. So if you want to study machine learning, you go to Chicago. If you want to be a software engineer, go to MIT. And both of them are wonderful. And when I tell my kids, if you already spend the time to study, go to the best place. So if you watch a video, class online, watches from Stanford University, watches from Chicago, watches from MIT. Don't waste your time looking in another university because you're going to spend the time. The time is the most expensive things you have. All the rest are cheap. And over time you learn, the older you get, the more you understand. Just think about it. When you are 20 years old, you have the expected life Another, let's say, 60 years, okay? When you get 60, you have another 20, the value of time becomes to be even more. Yeah. You know, so you don't want to waste the time. Anyway, I think this is a, I always like to put those discussion because those ones usually they don't talk about them in school. And they make a difference in life. So mm -hmm. thank you guys. Why don't you guys just say goodbye and then we'll continue. We made a lot of progress today. We did mostly re review and review it's very important. I will finish with a phrase from Hebrew. Me, I have to translate it to English, definitely not, not to French. It says, if you want to study something new, you should review the old one, the old knowledge. So you can't study new stuff without knowing the other one, the previous one very well. So that's why you should repeat, 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 okay. and then you can put another new stuff on top of it. So, so if you want interested in uh, accounting, let me know. When I work, I can send you an email. You can join me. You can see how I work. I'll be more than happy to show you. I work all the day, in fact, all the night too, as you can tell. Uh, so, thank you. Let me say goodbye, Frank. Can we see you and say goodbye? Au revoir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'm missing someone. Au <laughs> Yeah, here you are. Good night. Have a good one. Good night, Raman. I'm I'm on. If anyone wants to talk to me, you can more than welcome to talk to me anytime. I always walk. I always okay. I always busy. I always available. So, have a good <laughs> one. Bye, Raman. Have a good one. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. okay, bye bye. See you Thursday. Don't forget, we're doing twice a week. Thursday. So we can finish more, finish the course on time, and then also. <laughs> Spend more time with you. Il est dormi là. C'est bien, il est dormi Non, je dors pas. Il deux heures. Il est en train de... Allez, Guy. C'est qui qui dort là? Bye, bye. Non, personne. Non, il a dormi un peu. Il a dormi au moins...